Don't worry, sir. Get you to uh, get you that <laughs> lickety split, sir. <laughs> yes, uh, yes, sir. I, I understand that nobody says lickety split anymore, sir. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. Hello! Today we shall be reviewing slash talking about the first episode of uh, Superman and Lois from the CW and uh, HBO Max kinda as well. Um, but anyway, uh, let me get out of this. So today we're going to be talking about slash reviewing Superman and Lois uh, Season 1, Episode 1, Pilot. It was a uh, longer than average episode. It was uh, the first hour and a half, then followed by a TV special, which uh, like talked about the show and what's to come and all that. The uh, first half of this will be reviews. Well, the first half will be spoiler-free, and then the second half will have spoilers, so just a uh, forewarning. I will give a spoiler warning where there actually are spoilers, but anyway, let's begin. The first thing that... Uh, we get introduced to is um it, it's filmed cinematically like there's a lot more just of a uh, like a higher budget feel to it which um is like really nice considering that a superman like you want it to feel as high as possible and uh tyler hotchlin uh comes back as clark kent slash superman um uh, i can't think of her name i just had it at the tip of my tongue but um lois the same actress from uh Pretty much all the shows, she comes back as well. And then pretty much is all the original cast besides uh, Samuel Lane, uh, Lane which uh, is uh, Lois's father. And then um, uh, Morgan Edge is a different one, which we don't really see in this episode. We see him, like, a picture of him because he's, like, uh, buying more and more. He bought the Daily Planet. And then, uh, like, that's not a spoiler. I won't go into any more about that. But he does buy the Daily Planet. But, um... Pretty much the general feel of this episode is, uh, what if Man of Steel met the Christopher Reeve Superman? And that's pretty much what this entire, uh, like, show feels like to uh, me, uh, at least to me personally. But if you remember, before, uh, Crisis on Infinite Earths, the first part, uh, like, the, uh, Clark just had one son. But now, post-Crisis, he has two kids and they're actually teenagers already. So I believe the opening montage was just kind of showing, like, everything that happened in the new reality, even though he didn't remember it right away this is what happened in like the new reality the uh earth prime universe since everything is on the same earth now supergirl superman uh batwoman black lightning and like absolutely everybody is just on the same earth uh arrowverse earth i know that they're uh i i just heard that like arrowverse was before crisis and the uh, cw verse of heroes is post crisis which honestly i feel like just caught it to all arrowverse through and through but, um, it was a really good episode. It ran about, like, after commercials. I want to say it was about an hour and, like, five, maybe seven minutes long. But it was nice to get a longer, like, feel for a pilot and all that. And it was, like, it was just really, really well done. I really enjoyed it. I'm really, really looking forward to what it brings. Um, the, the CGI is very, very well done. I really enjoyed that. And, um... This, uh, okay, minor spoiler warning. During the intro, like, we get the classic, he crashes to Earth. We didn't get any destruction of Krypton, though, but when he crashed to Earth, like, we saw Jonathan and Martha Kent walk over, and, like, they decide to take him in and all that, like, the classic Superman mythos, and then, like, it shows a couple of years later, like, he threw a, uh, paper, not paper airplane, like, a little, uh, model die-cast airplane, and he throws it, and it goes flying through the house, like, completely through the walls and everything, and they're like... Oh, okay, so, uh, yeah, we're gonna have to do something about that, like, you're special, and, like, uh, as that went on, he got a bit older, and then they showed him getting ready for the Smallville Fair, and then all of a sudden, uh, Jonathan was there, and then, like, he got down, and then he went his arm like this, and then he, like, fell over, and then, like, he, like, died, which, if you, um, know the Superman mythos, you know that Jonathan always usually does die within it, like, it happened in Smallville, it happened in Man of Steel, it happened in, uh, the original Superman movie, like, that seems to be, like, uh, the trending theme, like, um, Bruce Wayne's parents always get killed in the alley, and then Superman, his, uh, dad always dies, uh, it's different how they do it, um, in most incarnations has been a stroke or a heart attack besides uh, Man of Steel where a tornado was coming he was just like 
which I feel like I really do enjoy Man of Steel, but like uh, I feel like his death is handled much, much better in Smallville. But anyway, I'm I'm getting off topic. But um, pretty much it just throws uh, shows him throughout the years as he grows and all that, and then eventually leads to his life in Metropolis with Lois. And um, one of the early scenes too was um, him catching the car from the uh, classic. Uh, well, action comics number one, the first one ever, the green car, and then, uh, when he lands, and then he puts the car down, and then he walks up to, uh, the kid, and he's, like, it has the classic, uh, Max Fletcher cartoon, like, it was that type of, uh, Superman suit, and then he, uh, gives it back, the kid is, uh, ball cap, I want to say it was, and then the kid was, like, cool suit, and he's, like, thanks, my mom made it for me, and then he just flies away, and it was, like, it was really, really cool, because that's what, one of the lines that he said in the comic book, too, he's, like, my mom made it for me, and then he just flies away, so, like, it, it, like, that was, uh, like, just, it was so, so cool, but anyway, um, that was minor spoilers, uh, I do recommend this show a lot, a lot, a lot, it completely, blew my expectations out of the water, but now that we are done talking about the normal, like, uh, minor spoilers and all that, we shall get into spoilers. I shall give you five seconds before we start talking about them. Alrighty then, so let's begin with the spoiler talk. There's been, like, this mystery villain, a lot of people didn't really know who he was, uh, who he was, he was called the Stranger, and, um, he had this, like, big suit on, almost kind of looked like Master Chief from Halo and all that, and then they ended up having a big fight and all that, like, um, the fight was really, really cool, it started in, um, a power plant because, uh, somebody was destroying power plants and all that, and the first one, uh, Superman had to fix, he fixed with his laser beam, uh, like, heat vision and all that, and then they needed water to cool it down, so he went over to, um, the ocean, and then he, uh, like, his breath, and he froze it and all that, and then he picked up a big chunk of ice, and then he brought it down into the nuclear reactor, and it completely cooled it down. Now, one different thing that they're doing with this, which hasn't been in all the other incarnations, which I really, really like that they're changing this up, is he has a much, much, much better relationship with Samuel Lane. I thought that was a really, really cool touch, and I really, really enjoyed that. I was like, okay, I like, I like this a lot, that they're, uh, like, they're much, uh, there are much better terms than they have before, but then, um, we, um, go back to Smallville, because Clark got a call from his mom and all that, and he was like, eh, I think it's time for a visit, why not, and then all of a sudden, um, they go to the Daily Planet, like I said earlier, we found out that Morgan Edge actually took over, uh, well, bought out, and Clark got fired from his job, and then he, uh, like, pretty much all shit has hit the fan for him, and then, his two kids, um, I can't think of their names off the top of my head, but one is, like, very good at everything, and then the other one is, like, a loner, and, like, he has social anxiety, and, like, he just has a lot of problems, while the other one seems like he has all the problems figured out. So, th those are pretty much his two kids, and then, pretty much, uh, what happens is he gets a call from the doctor, he said, uh, you should come see your mom, and then he goes, uh, like, he speeds over to Smallville, and then we, uh, the biggest shock of this one, that they actually did kill Martha off, I was surprised that they actually did that, and they pretty much said that she had a, a like a stroke in her bed and then she died and like I gotta say the music played at this scene was like it was just beautiful like it did like it was super super sad it did bring a tear to my eye exactly how everything just came together and like it was just like the score on this is like big big too like it was very very well done um one of the different things is uh like uh, I think uh, Blake Neely does most of the scores for the other one I don't think this was uh Blake Neely because they didn't even use the uh Superman theme from Supergirl they actually just use the own theme for uh, like they made a, its own unique theme to Superman and Lois so that I thought that was a really cool touch and then um he decides like uh, to uh, come out to his kids tell them that he is actually Superman because they go uh, searching into the barn after he tells them, do not go into the barn. And then there's a little accident, like there's a couple pipes come falling down, and then uh, the two kids are under it, but you don't really know what kid had powers. They're leaning towards it was uh, the kid that has everything figured out, but they weren't really sure. A uh, cool little touch to uh, the kid that doesn't have everything figured out. He is actually playing Injustice, so I thought that was a cool little touch. And he even said, like, Superman is weak or something like that, so I thought that was uh, kind of funny. But anyway, like, he decides to tell his kids, like, 
he's Superman and then you don't believe him at first. So he goes and he picks up the truck. And I, I heard that a little while. I saw the pictures too. That this was all practical effects. They actually did not use any uh, CGI besides like removing the wire and all that. But he was like lifting up the uh, truck like this and then all that. And like it was super, super well done. The music, I absolutely love this new Superman theme. It's really, really, really good. It's probably going to go up there with every single Superman theme that there is. But anyway, like, they don't really, like, grasp it at first. They're like, yeah, we're, we're like, don't, don't, don't talk to us. And then, um, like, the, everything is just hitting the fan. They realize, um, there was a mortgage taken out on the, uh, Kent home and all that because Martha wanted to help the neighbors and all that. And we realized that the bank was actually bought out by, um, uh, oh my God, what? Morgan Edge and all that. So, the like, Morgan Edge is, like, dipping into everything. And then, uh, like, what, uh, what else happened was... So, what else also happened was that one of the big, big things that happened was um, we actually saw Lana, like, Lana Lane is back again in this uh, different version. She's married with her uh, husband that kind of seems like borderline asshole. We're not really sure yet. But anyway, what happened was that um, they got into an argument at the dinner table and all that at uh, Martha's funeral. But the big, big thing of this episode was definitely the end fight where um, he, Superman was fighting the stranger and the stranger seems to know everything about him. He was like, kal -El, I know who you are. I know that you can't see through lead. And I know that the own, like your own earth, your own planet is what kills you. Kryptonite kills you. And they have their, like their big fight. And the fight was actually really, really well done. They were going around the world. They, uh, fought a little bit in China, like he came out of a China shop and then he brushed himself off the dust. Then he went flying back at it and they were just hitting each other back and forth and then he was like, what do you want? And then the stranger was like, I come from a world that got destroyed. I am the lone survivor and I blame you for it. And then like you could tell just the hate in his voice for Superman. He absolutely hates, hates Superman, but pretty much the fight ends with him with the kryptonite and he just jabs it into him and then he goes falling, falling, falling and then pretty much he does like he wakes up and then he pulls it out of himself and then he gets better and he lands just like this last second and he looks up at the guy and the guy's like and he's like and then he flies away and then um that was pretty much the majority of the episode the episode is super well done they decide that they're gonna be staying in smallville and all that and i uh, like we knew that the show was gonna take place in smallville so uh, that wasn't really a big surprise but it's a very welcomed uh like plot development and all that it was just very 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 well done and now major spoiler warning major spoiler warning for this part um so the very very last scene shows the stranger walking in like um the arctic or whatever and he was walking to his ship and then he got in and he's like we have to make adjustments to the suit and then he takes off the helmet and then he puts it down but we haven't seen his face it's just from the back but he's bald and all that and then he walks up to the screen and he's like, if we truly want to kill the Man of Steel, we're going to have to make many, many adjustments to the suit. Begin immediately. And then the ship is like, of course, Captain Luther. So it sounds like we're actually be gonna we're gonna actually get what they were actually talking about earlier, which uh, I thought they ended up denying. But it sounds like it actually might be happening, which is the Lex from a different world uh, storyline, which is going to be very, very, very interesting to see. And I'm very, very, very much looking forward to it. This episode completely blew my expectations out of the water. I highly, highly recommend it. I give it a 9.5 out of 10 for a pilot. It's just, it's great. And I probably, I have to say, after thinking about it, this is probably my favorite pilot out of the Arrowverse so far. But anyway, that was my review of Superman and Lois Episode 1, Pilot. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and a subscribe so I know to keep making more of these. If you have any video requests, please put them down in the comments below. If you watch the episode, let me know what you thought of it down in the comments below. Are you looking forward to the other episodes? Uh, what did you think of the new tone of this? Because it does not feel like the tone of Supergirl. So just let me know what you think of it down in the comments below. Thanks for watching once again. Let me know, uh, the last thing too, what your favorite scene from the episode was down in the comments below. Thanks for watching once again, and I will see all of you in the next video. Bye!